from today we will start our fifth unit of machine learning class that is unsupervised learning and in this class we will see the introduction about this unsupervised learning and uh, supervised versus unsupervised learning and features or characteristics of unsupervised learning after that we will see some of the applications of unsupervised learning in machine learning the unsupervised learning is very important concept here the unlabeled and unclassified informations are used to, to analyze and discover the hidden knowledge inside the data. Right? So this is unsupervised learning. In unsupervised learning, the data are unlabeled data. Hence, there is no proper training data set. There is no training data set used in unsupervised learning. Training data. No training data. That is, the data is having no information. The algorithm is to analyze and identify the hidden information from the data set. Okay. So, the algorithm works on data without any prior, uh, prior training, but it will identify the patterns, groupings, sorting order, and other interesting knowledge from the data set. Okay. So, the algorithm will scan the entire data once and it will identify the hidden patterns of the data and the groupings of data and sorting order, if any, it will identify or any other interesting knowledge, that is the required knowledge from the data set. Okay, so this is unsupervised learning. And now let us see. Uh, the unsupervised learning versus supervised learning. That means how the unsupervised learning is different from supervised learning. In our previous classes, we have studied the supervised learning. The aim of this supervised learning is to predict the outcome variable or target variable y based on the given features x1, x2, etc. up to xn and the methods used are classification and regression. Okay, so by using classification or regression, we try to predict the value of y. That is the target variable value. Isn't it? So this is called a supervised learning. But when come to unsupervised learning, we need to observe only the features x1, x2, etc. up to xn. That is the given data set. We are going to analyze only the features. That is all features of the data. Right? And we are not going to predict any outcome variable. Okay. There is no y variable here. We are not predicting any outcome variable. But we need to find the association between the features or their grouping to understand the nature of data. How the data is given in the data set. Okay. In what are the relationship between the features? Isn't it? How the features are related to each other and what way the data is given in the data set. That is only we are going to analyze here. This analysis may reveal the interesting uh, correlation between the features or the common behavior of the feature within the subgroup of data. Okay, which provides better understanding of the data. Okay. So, in the unsupervised learning, we are not predicting any future variable, but we try to understand the behavior of data. In terms of statistics, in supervised learning, try to learn the probability of outcome y for particular input x. Okay, that is the posterior probability. Okay. But when come to unsupervised learning, it is closely related to density estimation in the statistics. Right? That is, every input and the corresponding targets are concatenated to create new set of input. That is, x1, y1, x2, y2, etc. up to xn, yn. Okay? We are concatenating the target uh, into the input. Okay? And this leads... To better understanding of correlation of x and y. Okay, so this probability is called as joint probability. Okay, so in supervised learning, uh, the posterior probability is used. When come to uns unsupervised learning, the joint probability is used. 
let us try to understand more about uh, unsupervised learning uh, with one example that is movie promotion example so in earlier days uh, the promotion uh, will be pushed to, to that is the same data to all group of people so that everyone have to watch the same poster or trailer irrespective of their choice or preferences that is the same thing will be given to all the people irrespective of their requirement isn't it so in most cases the person watch the promotion or trailer would end up ignoring it some people will get irritated okay so uh, this will waste of money and waste of effort of the promotion but what we have to do by using some smart device or smart application now we need to understand which people like the movie we are going to identify those people and the movie will be promoted only for those particular people okay now the reachability will be very high for this purpose we can use unsupervised learning algorithms and now let us see somewhat detail about the supervised learning and the unsupervised learning with respect to the given parameters right when come to input data the supervised machine learning used the labeled data okay but here it is unlabeled data unlabeled data okay when come to complexity the supervised learning is very simple but unsupervised learning is somewhat complicated when compared to the supervised learning when come to accuracy yes this is highly accurate result we will get because we are using labeled data here the accuracy is very less because there is no training for the algorithm isn't it so when come to number of classes um, in supervised learning the number of classes is already known that is predefined classes are used here here there is no such classes that is the number of classes are unknown here and data analysis uh, here it uses offline analysis and here this is real time analysis in unsupervised learning the data analysis is real time data analysis when come to algorithms the supervised learning algorithms are linear regression logistic regression random forest support vector machine uh, neural network and etc so these are some of the popular algorithms from supervised learning when come to unsupervised learning uh, here the k means clustering hierarchical clustering a priori algorithm so these are some of the popular algorithms in unsupervised learning uh, when come to output in supervised learning the desired output is given so by using that only the uh, model will be trained here there is no such desired output and training data okay supervised learning it uses the training data there is no such training data in unsupervised learning then the complex model it is not possible to learn larger or more complex model with supervised learning but when come to unsupervised learning this is possible to learn large and more complex models okay so the model can be tested we can test our model but there is no such test for our model in unsupervised learning and the alternative name for unsupervised uh, sorry supervised learning is classification here it is called as clustering and example optical character recognition and here face uh, finding face in images okay so these are uh, the supervised learning versus unsupervised learning with respect to the given parameters next let us see the features of unsupervised learning or sometimes the characteristics of unsupervised learning okay the main goal of unsupervised learning is to discover the hidden and interesting pattern in unlabeled data because we are giving only the unlabeled data to unsupervised learning the unlabeled data otherwise called as lightweight data lightweight data okay and the unsupervised learning method has no idea what the value of the output might be because there is no training data set 
no training data, isn't it? So it does not know anything about the output and it cannot directly apply it to regression and classification because the regression and classification should have uh, some training uh, and the unsupervised learning does not know anything about the output, isn't it? So those data cannot be applied directly on regression or classification. Here, the unsupervised learning relies on unique training system. Its own unique training system because there is no proper training for this learning and classifies original data with little or no already known labeled data. Okay, so the unsupervised learning used to, to classify uh, the original data because there is no training data here, isn't it? So unsupervised learning could find some potential quality when compared to the supervised, that is the regression or classification. The unsupervised learning method has some original quality that humans cannot, isn't it? For example, let us take the galaxies in our universe okay so the galaxies some of the galaxies we never ever seen before but if we give those data to clustering we can analyze something uh, from the galaxies that is we will get some knowledge from the galaxies because we don't know anything about the galaxies that is we don't have any knowledge from the galaxies so by using uh, unsupervised learning or clustering, we will get some knowledge from the galaxies, isn't it? Because we never ever seen those data before. There are two major features of unsupervised learning. First one is clustering and second one is association. That is association analysis, right? Clustering means it segments the set of objects into group of similar objects. And association is related to identify the relationship among the objects in the data set. Okay, it identifies the relationship among the data in the data set, that is association. First, let us say something about clustering. Uh, it is the most common supervised learning algorithm which is used to, to explore data analysis to find the hidden patterns or groupings in the data. To find the pattern or grouping in the data, we can use clustering. Okay, the applications of cluster analysis which includes gene sequence analysis, market research, and object recognition. Okay, so these are some of the applications of clustering. And the common algorithms, that is, the clustering algorithms includes anomaly deduction, neural network, uh, approaches for learning, latent variable models. Okay, so these are some of the common algorithms which are used in, that is, clustering algorithm. And the next one is association analysis. Okay, and this association analysis find the interesting relations or associations among variables of data set. And also it will identify the dependency between one data item and the another data item. That means how one data item is dependent on another data item. Okay, so uh, these are the main features of association analysis and it is having its own rules okay to discover the interesting relations between data items or between variables in the database and the common algorithms which are used uh, in association analysis are market basket analysis web usage mining and continuous production okay so uh, this is association analysis and next let us see the applications of unsupervised learning these unsupervised learning algorithms worked on uncategorized and unlabeled data and there are many domains where unsupervised learning finds its applications. Okay, In many real-time applications, we can use these unsupervised learning algorithms. And let us see some of them. The first one is segmentation of target consumer population by advertising consultancy agencies. Okay, So, Accordingly, they can give their advertisement to particular group of consumers okay, on the basis of few dimensions such as demography, financial data, purchasing habits, etc. Okay, so once they segment those consumers, then the advertisers can reach their target consumers very efficiently okay, because 
the reachability will be very high. For example, suppose if we um, promote the movie sport, uh, movie that is sport category movie to only the youngsters, then the reachability will be very high, isn't it? So grouping of consumers is very important. And the second application is anomaly or fraud detection in banking sector. Okay, so the, this will be very much helpful for the bankers to provide the loan for their consumers. Okay, by identifying the pattern of loan defaulters. Okay, the people who properly pay their loan, then they will get the next loan, isn't it? And the third one is image processing and image segmentation. Okay, uh, such as face recognition, expression identification and etc. So, this will be very much helpful in many of the applications. The next application from genetic algorithm that is grouping the important characteristics in genes. So, based on the characteristics, the genes will be grouped uh, that is clustered. And the next one is utilization uh, by data scientist to reduce the dimensionalities in the sample data, that is dimensionality reduction. We have already seen our previous classes, that is the more number of uh, uh, features will be reduced into very important less number of features so that the complexity will get reduced, isn't it? So this is dimensionality reduction. And the next one is document clustering. So based on the label, the documents will be grouped or sorted out, okay? And the next one is um, the unsupervised learning nowadays very much used in artificial intelligence and machine learning. That is in association with the supervised learning, the that is the unsupervised learning can be utilized in many other areas that is creating chatbot, self-driven cars and many other recent innovations are used to the combination of unsupervised learning as well as supervised learning. So far we have seen the introduction to unsupervised learning from Gupta unit. So this is the first class. Uh, in here we have seen the unsupervised learning versus supervised learning and features of unsupervised learning and applications of unsupervised learning. In the next class we will see something detailed about the clustering, okay, clustering algorithms.